The prices of most goods and services are based on supply and demand, and of course electricity is no exception. The problem of electricity price forecasting is related yet distinct from that of electricity load forecasting. Although the demand or load and the prices are correlated, their relationship is non-linear. The load is influenced by factors such as the non-storability of electricity, consumers' behavioural patterns and seasonal changes in demand. The price, on the other hand, is affected by all those factors as well as the additional aspects such as financial regulations, competitors' pricing strategies, dynamic market factors and various other macro and microeconomic conditions. As a result, the price of electricity is a lot more volatile than electricity load. Interestingly, when dynamic pricing strategies are introduced, prices become even more volatile, where the daily average price is changed by up to 50%, while other commodities may exhibit as changes just as little as 5%. Load forecasting has progressed to a point where the load can be predicted with up to 98% accuracy in some cases. However, current state-of-the-art techniques in price forecasting are at most 95% accurate. Thus, a more accurate price forecasting system is necessary, since many retailers and the businesses depend on the price of electricity. Due to the importance of this accurate price forecasting, a number of approaches have been presented in the literature. These approaches range from the traditional time series analysis to machine learning techniques of forecasting future prices. Our Eman Garch models are examples of traditional methods, while artificial neural network, hidden Markov models, and support vector regressions are examples of machine learning techniques. The use of artificial neural networks in price forecasting is an actively researched area. Whilst the models may change, the general approach is to extract the best features from a pool of features and train the artificial neural network with these features in order to create a real-time forecasting model. Lagged prices are generally used in price forecasting since there's a high autocorrelation with electricity market prices. However, in a real-time setup, apart from the system load and the price during the previous periods, no other features are available, thus restricting us to features from the available pool. How then do we go about building our model? Well, feature creation and selection is the first step in the classification or regression. It's a widely used process in machine learning. It involves either selecting a subset of the existing elements or the creation of new features which we can feed into our network. The selected subset will contain key features which contribute to the accuracy of the forecast and also help to reduce overfitting of the model. Electricity market data comes in the form of time series, as in time value pairs, and does not provide any specific features for use with an artificial neural network. Thus, we have to create features from the available past data as inputs to our model. In price forecasting, it's also important to take into account both short and long-term trends as well as seasonal patterns. Sudden changes in the price may be caused by seasonal behaviours as well as a raft of other factors. Typically, therefore, we want to capture short-term, long-term and seasonal trends in the price data. Therefore, we typically create uh, features such as last year, same day, same hour, last year, same day, same hour, price fluctuations, as well as looking at year-on-year -year weekly changes. While it's tempting to feed the network as much data as we have, if you want to achieve a higher forecasting accuracy, overfitting and overtraining the network should be avoided. Constructing a feature set purely from historic price data does give good forecasting results, but it is possible to improve the accuracy by considering other features that are not directly associated with price data. Other parameters that could plausibly affect the load or price in the market should be considered. For example, it's important to include temperature, day of the week and the occurrence of holidays in your feature set. Including calendar-based features and, most importantly, temperature will increase the accuracy of your forecasting model. To perform forecasting using an artificial neural network, two basic steps are required. The first is training and the second is learning. Assume that the training set should contain the historic data along with the desired output. In the learning step, the neural network learns to reconstruct the input and output mappings by updating the weights of inputs and biases at the end of each iteration. Backpropagation is the most common learning algorithm in which at the end of each iteration, the output area is propagated back to the input to adjust those weights we mentioned. To overcome the slow convergence rates of the backpropagation algorithm, two parameters, learning rate and momentum, can be adjusted. What is a learning rate though? Well, it's generally how quickly the network abandons its old beliefs for new ones. Let's think of a contrived example. Well, if a child sees 10 examples of cats and all of them have orange fur, it will think that cats have orange fur and will look for orange fur when trying to identify a new cat. Now, if it sees a black cat and her parents tell her that it's a cat, with a large learning rate, it will quickly realise that orange fur is not the distinguishing feature of cats. With a small learning rate, it will think that this black cat is an outlier and will still think that the cats are defined as having orange fur. OK, that's a bit of a stretch, but the point is that higher learning rate means that network changes its mind more quickly. 
That can be a good thing, for example, when identifying cats, but it can also be bad. If the learning rate is too high, the network may start to think that all cats are black, even though it's seen some examples of orange cats. In general, you want to find a learning rate that's low enough so that the network converges to something useful, but high enough so you don't have to spend years training it. So what does momentum mean in the case of neural networks? In neural networks, we use a gradient descent optimization algorithm to minimize the error function to reach a global minimum, i.e. the most optimum solution for the question at hand. Imagine you're walking across a hilly landscape and you want to reach the bottom of the valley. Now your simple rule to get down is to keep descending until you reach a point where you can't descend any further. Ideally, of course, that would be the bottom of the valley, but without being able to see your way, you may get stuck in a small gully. This is the equivalent of reaching a local minima rather than the global minima. And the algorithm in our neural network may think that we've reached a global minima and therefore leads to suboptimum results. To avoid the situation, we use a momentum term as in the objective function. This is a value between 0 and 1 that increases the size of the steps taken towards the minima. Therefore, we can think of this as taking larger steps down the valley. It helps us to leap out of the local minima and to try more solutions. If the momentum term is large, then the learning rate should be kept small. A large value of momentum also means that the convergence will happen fast, but if both the momentum and the learning step are kept in large values, then you might skip the minimum with a huge step. We can think of this as jumping across the valley. Now, a small value of momentum cannot reliably avoid local minima and is also slow to train the system. The right value of momentum can either be learned by trial and error or through cross-validation. The real reason for interest and most importantly investment in artificial neural networks is they can solve problems. For example, Google uses the artificial neural networks to learn how better to target the watch next suggestions on YouTube videos. The scientists at the Large Hadron Collider turn to artificial neural networks to assist the results of their collisions and to pull the signature of just one particle out of a larger storm. Credit card companies use them to identify fraudulent transactions and we can use them to build our own electricity price forecasting models. And that's exactly what I intend to do in this series. I intend to show where we can get the data, how we can process it, what features we need to look for, and how we can build and train our own models. By the end of it, I hope we'll both have learned a little bit more about machine learning, a little bit more about electricity price forecasting, and of course, what artificial neural networks can and can't do. 